Um, so I'm wondering if everyone can give uh, the three panelists, that is, uh, a key takeaway about what you'd like the audience to learn uh, or to leave with when it comes to health equity and men's mental health. Uh, and maybe because we're a little short on time, maybe try to keep it to a couple sentences or a minute or, or so. And whoever would like to go first. I know we covered a lot today, so it's hard to, to cram it in. <laughs> Sure, I'll, I'll start us off just so I can be, be done. Um, <laughs> just uh, so I would say as um, you know, a researcher or scholar who has worked predominantly with self-identified mothers, um, I think it's important to note that advocating for fathers does not and should not take away from you know, allocations um, or funding or practices or support for mothers. Um, but I do think it's really important to highlight that well-intended policies can inadvertently further marginalize women, men, and gender diverse individuals. Um, and I think, you know, ultimately there's so many opportunities to engage under-resourced fathers, um, particularly when it comes to parenting. So, um, yeah, I, I hope there is, you know, there's a lot more work to happen in that area. Thank you. Sarah or Jennifer? Yeah, I guess my take home message would be quite simple um, that we need to remember whenever we're talking about men that we're not talking about a single group, that we're talking about a div diverse group uh, with diverse social identities um, and that really we need to prioritize this diversity if we're going to be more responsive towards equity. Um, and I love the phrase to ensure that no man is left behind. Um, I, th I think that we, yeah, we need to build more um, means of capturing diversity in our research. Agreed, excellent point. And last but not least, over to, to Jennifer. Can you hear me now? Uh, now we can, yeah. Okay, great. Come on, internet, hang in there. Just a couple more sentences. <laughs> uh, so I really, I'm so sorry about this. Um, I, I guess that just the takeaway that I'd like to share is just thinking about, I've been thinking a lot about connection. Um, one of the therapies that we deliver in these community-based settings is interpersonal psychotherapy, which is an emphasis on attachment and relationships. And this probably would be no surprise to many people on this call, but how important isolated men can be, but also thinking about isolation and term and disconnection with structures, you know, racism and um, you know, all the isms speaking to the intersectional intersectionality of people and how that affects people's sense of connection to each other. And, you know, we just need broad sweeping change, not to task us with changing the world, but, uh, you know, really thinking at the policy level, because even working in family systems is important and we can enhance connection in that way, but so much more needs to be done. And those family sy systems are also nested in bigger contexts that promote disconnection um, and thinking, you know, how we can repair, repair those fractures and continue to emphasize connection in a structural way. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jennifer. And thank you for uh, toughing it out with the internet. I'm glad we were able to catch everything from you.